Hi guys, here I'm going to show you how to turn dates into text in Excel. I'm even going to show you how to add the first, second, third, and so on endings to days. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, so here's the worksheet, and I have pretty much everything already laid out for us. We have some dates over here and examples over here. We're going to start pretty simple at first. So let's say that we have this date here, and we want to get how old the person is, or let's start with what year they were born in. So there's, I guess, two things I need to teach you first, in case you don't know that. What we're going to be doing here, I might as well just open this guy right here, this cell is a formula. It's not actually text. So when we open it, you'll see text here, an ampersand, and here we have a formula, a function, and a little bit more text. So what we're going to be doing is combining formulas and functions here with what's called concatenation. And concatenation is basically just combining separate things. So we use this ampersand here to combine text here on the left with the formula and then this ampersand here to combine it with this text. Now you could also use the concatenate formula to achieve the same result, but I find it's a little bit more fluid to just type it out like this. So let's say we want to get the year for, let's do this guy right over here. Let's say we want to get the year for a date. You may already know this function, year function, hit enter, and we get 1990. Okay, and you know how to type text, okay? But now, if we want to combine all of those, let's do this guy from scratch. We do equals, and to combine text with the formula, you have to surround it with quotation marks. So equals, they were born in, then put a space so that we have a space between this and the year. Now we do our ampersand, our year function, just like we would normally. Then another ampersand, because we want to put a period at the end of it. Quotation mark, period, quotation mark, and that's it. Now hit enter, and it combines to make a nice, beautiful, lovely little sentence. Now it's going to get more complex than this. Don't worry, especially when we get to formatting and putting the ending on the days. Might as well just delete that and leave this guy here. Now let's say we want to get how old they are. Well, we follow the same principle. We just have more stuff to do. So this right here is how we're going to get the age. So we do the same thing, text, ampersand, formula, ampersand, text, always surrounding all text with quotation marks. And do make sure to put a space at the front here and a space at the end here so it looks nice and neat. Now the formula that we use here, it's a pretty cool little formula. We just go Let's get today's year, so equals the year of what? And let's use today's date, and then that would be 2019. And now we'll just subtract the year of the individual's birthday. Okay, now it's formatted it as a date. Don't freak out, don't worry, nothing wrong there. Let's drop down the home tab and let's format this guy as general and we'll now see 29. Now we don't have to worry about that happening over here because Excel is not going to format this randomly as a date. Now that's the easy one. So we've got the year function, there's also the month function and the day function. But now let's skip down into formatting because you may say well why don't you show us an example of how to use the month? Well that's the next section right here where it's going to be really easy to get the name of a month. So this was basic, this right here, the formatting guy, is where we get to use the lovely, lovely text function. The text function is what's going to allow us to convert the date into something more readable. And we have lots of different options. So what you do is you just select the cell with the date, and then within quotation marks, you put this funny looking little code. So here it says output the month and the full name of the month, and then the full year and put a space between it. Now let me explain how this works because it's kind of confusing at first. Well, let's go to the date formats tab over here. And here I have listed 
copy pasted from Microsoft's website, super simple, the sort of legend for what you can use as a code. So 1M corresponds to outputting the month 1 to 12. Two M's, we'll put a zero in front of the one, so zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, and so on. And then this one, Jan to December abbreviation, the full month, the first letter of the month. So here's the code for each one of those. And we can combine these codes to make the full formatted date. There are a number of things you can use to combine them, but these separators are really the best things to use. So you can have a space, a period, a dash, a comma, a slash. There's probably a couple other things that I forgot to put in there, but these are the most commonly used ones. So if you remember back here for our example, March 2019, we have four M's, a space, and four Y's. So four M's, it's going to output the month like this. Four Y's, the year will be output like this. So here we have the same thing, but with a comma and then a space. And the date format is going to stay the same except for the separator. So I wanted to show you how you can incorporate different separators for each of these. So there's the slash, and here's the period. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and do something like D dash. Looks kind of goofy this way, but just to show you that the separators don't have to be the same, we can put some spaces in here. And now we can combine this with what we are doing up here to, let's say, okay, they were born in ampersand, and now let's output the name of the month. Text, the year, remember quotation marks, it's easy to forget that, and then let's do the full format, the long version of the name for the month, ampersand, period. Okay, they were born in March. Now you may say, what about the month function? We look at the month function. The month function outputs a number. So that wouldn't work so well unless you said they were born in month three or month four or month five, which most people don't talk like that. Now there are a number of different formatting options that you can use. And this tab probably doesn't include all of them. If you want to see some more examples, what you can do, you can click any cell, it doesn't really matter, but click one with a date so you can see what the output would look like. So right, or one that is formatted as a date. So if you're not aware of how that works, if I click this cell and go up here on the home tab, you see it says date. Going over here, it says general. So this is formatted as a date. This is text. That looks like a date, or it's just a textual representation of a date. So we right click a cell that is a date, format cells, go to the number tab, and go down here to, don't stay on date, go to custom. And you're gonna see some options, like right here. And you'll see, let me zoom in, you'll see the letter representations that were on the other tab. M, D, Y, 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 and you'll see it up here. So if you wanna use one of these formats, you can grab it, just copy it and paste it. So I could grab this, copy it, go down here. Let's just put it right next to this guy. Text, value, formats, and there you go. But remember, like I said, this is formatted as a date. We can see date up here. But if I click this dude, it is general. And where that could come in handy is, let's say I wanted to put this guy in a sentence. So I'm gonna move him, oh, come on, move him down here. Say, this is my date. Ampersand, let's select my date, okay. And it outputs this funky number. Well, if you've worked with dates before, you, you should know what this is. It's a serial number. This is how Excel actually represents a date. So if I convert this from date to general, you will see that number. That's what's actually in the cell. When it looks like a date, it's merely formatted like a date. So we just changed the formatting to date, and that's what it looks like. So if you want to make it so that when we put it with other text, 
we get what looks like a date format. We have to convert it to text, the textual representation of the date first. So let's try this again, but let's use this guy. Equals, this is my date. Don't forget the ampersand. OK, enter. There we go. Now it works. Is it complicated? Yes. Does it seem unnecessary? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Our date's a pain in the butt. You betcha. <laughs> but the text function is going to save your life. So use the text function. Download this workbook. Use this date formats tab as a reference. If you forget anything, right click over a date format cells, custom tab, and look through one of these options. And you want to write, you can right click any cell, but if you right click a date and you go through these options, you can see what the date would look like up here when you change the options. So that's why it's useful to do that. Okay. Now let's get to the really, really cool thing. Let's add STNDRDTH to our dates, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. Now, in order to do this, we're going to use a neat little formula that I picked up years ago, and it's great. Just save it, copy, paste it whenever you need it. So here's our lovely date formatted as a date, and it's the first. Okay. So this is... <laughs> Uh, this is it. Yeah, it's a it's a bit of a bruiser. If you want a quick reference, let's say you're gonna you do this for another language. Well, notice how it goes like this: first, second, third, fourth. Where's fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth? Where is it all the way up to the twenty-first? You don't need it because everything under twenty-one will go to the next lowest value, which is four, which is th. So that's why you see these gaps, and that's how it works. So 21 will match that for 21st, 22nd, then we need 23rd, then 24th, but we don't need 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. So those numbers are not in here, so they go to the next highest number, which is 24, which outputs TH. It's basic lookup stuff, but this is put kind of in a confusing way in this formula. So we can test it out here. If we go over to this guy, let's make it... 25th, 25th, 24th, perfect, now 23rd, amazing. It really is so cool. <laughs> I love this little dude. And down here, I've just combined them. So this is what we've just been learning for the entire tutorial. Here we have text, then we use an ampersand, and what I did here is I just referenced this cell. So it's not all completely combined into one cell here. So I referenced this cell here, and then I do some more text. Remember, always quotation marks, combine everything with an ampersand. You don't need a space after or before the ampersand, but it makes it easier to read. So please put it in there. And then at the end here, the text function that we just learned so that we can output the date in a nice, neat way. Now, if we combine everything into one cell, we get this bruiser of a formula. <laughs> but just remember, it's only really a few parts. Some text here, an ampersand to combine the next part, a big formula here, an ampersand to connect the next text, ampersand, and the final part right here. So. That's it for this tutorial. That is quite a lot to cover in such a short time. I guess the most important takeaway from this, I'd say, the most helpful thing is really going to be the text function. So never forget the text function. And if you forget the codes here, right click format cells, go to the custom section and look at some of the samples there. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.